you moved back to Kentucky, I would assume that it was a fair amount driven by uh, affection for place and a desire to be rooted. Um, how has your affection for this place grown and expanded and changed since coming back? Oh, it really has. Um, when, I, when we moved back to Kentucky, it was in 1964, I was 30 years old. I thought that was pretty old. <laughs> but it's easy for me to allow people to assume that I knew what I was doing. I was under the rule of affection. I wanted to come back. And uh, I was fortunate to have married a girl who would let me, who would give me permission to do it, who would come with me. Um, she lived all over the place. I forget how many schools, 20 maybe or something, that she'd been to as a girl. Um, she wanted um, maybe to settle down a bit. Uh, she wanted her children to have a different kind of life from that. Um, but if you, know, if you think you don't need your spouse's permission to do something like that, you just don't know anything about marriage. <laughs> If, if, um, if Tanya, my wife, had not wanted to do this or had not let me want to do it, it would have been awful. Um, and, you know, I went with some girls that I look back on and I know if I'd stuck with them, it would have been a... Well, anyway, you know. You, um, so I'd already, I was, uh, I hadn't finished uh, my novel, A Place on Earth, um, at the time I came back, it would be three more years before I did, and I'd been working on it for four years. But I, it, if I had uh, been rational, maybe I was a little bit, I would have known, and maybe I did a little bit, that wherever I went, my mind had been formed by this little, uh, this little, tiny country that I'd grown up in, a few square miles, 10 maybe, and that that, that, that was going to be my, my subject because the, uh, my emotional life was centered there and my affection and so on. So, uh, so I did, and I do remember knowing, well, you're going to go back and bury a lot of people is what you're going to do. And I think I even knew I was going to bury a lot of people who couldn't be replaced, who wouldn't, who could have been replaced in their function, uh, but who wouldn't be because the replacements were gone. And I have. And, uh, you know, I've delivered too many eulogies. I've carried too many coffins. No, I shouldn't say that. I've done the things I needed to do uh, to be a member of my community. I just know too many is too, uh, it's not too many. No amount, no number would be too many. But as I've lived here and lived into the place and grown to know it, uh, for one thing, what I've begun to realize, and none of my advisors at the time I was leaving New York City understood this, um, my place is inexhaustible in interest, in beauty, in events, relationships, and so on. Uh, ten lifetimes couldn't exhaust it. It would be doing something new all the time, something different. And um, every day, I walk in the footsteps, I cross the tracks of people I've known well and loved very much. And uh, that's just indescribably rich. It's layered somehow very deeply. And um, 
I don't know how I would have had that otherwise. It's very rewarding, uh, leaving aside what it's caused me to write, which uh, that's an evaluation I just don't want to get into, but um, it's, it's very moving. And my kids have it. And uh, I hand it on to my grandchildren. I've been working with, uh, with my grandson since he was this big, he would, you know, when he, and now he's gone off to school, which is a terrible thing to have, <laughs> to have happened. But I, I repeat things that I remember people saying for him. I want to get them into his mind. Now, there's a whole, a whole set of, of good sayings with attributions that he's been given. I don't know whether he'll remember them or not, but 